that brings us to this 40 hour challenge that you put, put down to and and, and 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 challenge me even with and i don't write music yeah but i picked that thing up looked at it and nearly threw everything i had out the window for the weekend and sat down all sunday screw my dad for father's day i almost wrote a song that day oh, I, good I, man. I mean obviously i i, I didn't because i'm not a musician but me neither but what you wrote was so inspiring that even people who aren't even remotely affiliated with everybody i contacted with that was just blown out of the freaking water and what you got for a response was yeah. so 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 good yeah 15 people well 15 count on myself in 40 and hours in 40 hours and there's a whole bunch of people as well who said they would try to do it but they had a gig on or they had you know they had legitimate reasons um it, it, it's I had this idea a while ago um, and I just I was talking to my mate Mark who's in the band Cage 23 who actually did a remix that's on one of our new remix CDs it was a really fucking good remix too um, really old school industrial like I like it he's been making music for a long time a long this guy's a veteran industrial guy and he now works in New York City and we, we're caught up in a bar on Thursday and he was saying about how he is so busy and he just wants to make music. And I go, yeah, man, I'm really so busy too. I would just want to make music. And I said, hey, let's do this thing. And I just said, fuck it, let's do it. Um, I said, on Friday night at midnight, we're going to start and I'm going to meet you at the Mars Bar down on 2nd Avenue and 1st. What a dive. Oh, I know, it's great. They do the best rum and cokes for five bucks. It's like rum, 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 coke. There you go. Uh. Party. No <laughs> sleep till Brooklyn. Or wherever. Um... Yeah, and I'll see you there Sunday at 4 p.m. That's 40 hours. Let's go. Unfortunately, Mark's fucking computer broke down, so we couldn't do it. But I put a thing out on the web, and given the time differences, like some of the guys from Australia basically received it because, you know, they're 14 hours ahead of us or something, 15 hours. And they just received it, and they were, I'm going to do it right now. Tomorrowland, yeah. Yeah, Tomorrowland. That's right. Um, and it was so inspiring to get all of this stuff back, and... You know, um, uh, uh, you know, there, there, there were bands who had been doing it for a long time. There was a 14-year-old girl did something. And it was awesome. She actually, she was 14 and she, she, she put a thing in it. It's like really cool piano and drums and shit. And she's having a sing and it's great. Wrote lyrics, everything, 40 hours. I wasn't doing that when I was 14. I was. Were you? Yeah, it's a, when I was 14. I... But, so you were making music when you were 14? Oh, yeah. You rock. God, I started when I was like 15. But there was a 16-year-old. Um, there was a 16-year-old. You did was, it better and harder. Yeah, no, I was, I was doing, I was building go-karts when I was 14. Um, and I was welding and grinding and shit. That's where I got into the whole industrial thing. Yeah. So, so you issued this challenge yeah, to, to challenge yourself? And, yeah, to myself, me and Mark, basically. And I invited anyone else who'd be fucked to join in. And, um, yeah, we got... Counting myself, 15 people, and they're up on the Last FM page. If you go to the Angel Spit page, it's there, proud. But we call it Destruction Time again, because it's such an excellent Depeche Mode album. The plan was we were going to go out on, on Friday night and record stuff around New York, find some buskers, but I was so fucked. I, we, we went out at midnight, and we came back at like 2, and I just collapsed from exhaustion, got up at like 10 the next morning and just went for it. Wrote lyrics, wrote synths and all that shit, in 32 hours or something I don't know and it was such a it was such a good thing and you came up with Idiot yeah yeah came up with Idiot I'm really proud of it see like it's really funny I'm listening back to it going if I, I'm going to I, I, I want to put it on a CD in the future and there's I've already got a bunch of shit I want to do to it like I was doing the vocoder parts for it because there's all this grinding vocal effects in the background that you don't even hear um, because all this other stuff's going insane crazy shit so, um, yeah, I, I just want to go back and, and simplify it so you can actually hear this stuff. And it's really funny that when you've, when you've only got like two hours to put this down, because I'm meeting, you know, Mark and the other guys at the Mars Bar in like two hours time, you go, well, fuck it. I don't have time to EQ it X, Y, Z. I just have to put it down. And a lot of the other guys who are involved in this also mentioned that it's a similar situation. You've got to do it right fucking now. Yep. Right fucking now. Um, and yeah, it was really, really cool. Gun to the head, gun to the head. It's like a gun to the head. What are you going to do? Uh, I, I used to, I took this jazz class once with yeah. somebody named, yeah. um, Charles Gale. 
He's 80 years old. He used cool. to stash his uh, saxophones in all of the uh, subway tracks. Really? And he'd go on tour through Europe. And he'd, be, he'd, he'd, he'd go to the airport. He'd, like, walk to the JFK. <laughs> and he'd get on the airplane and he'd go to Europe and he'd get off the airplane and he'd walk around. And he'd, as soon as he'd get off the airplane, there'd be a limo waiting for him. And he'd stay at the finest hotels, play at the, like some of the nicest places all through Europe. Come back to New York, he'd get off the airplane, he'd have nowhere to go, and he'd go right back to the subways. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. But what he used to tell me is um, when, when you're doing things music-wise or even anything-wise, the way to look at it is it's a gun-to-the-head situation. There is a gun to your head, what are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to do what it takes to get the gun away from your head because otherwise... You're dead. Otherwise, you're dead. That's, That's right. That's right. That's right. And Dude, well, that is exactly the shit I'm talking about with the whole apathy and the revolution and all this shit is that... There are two, la three laptops in this room right now, right? You're recording, I'm making music, and it's also fucking science fiction, you know? We can have as much perfection and other crap as we want. And I am so tired of that. I am so... It's missing the thrill of the accidents. It's missing the... I have no idea what I'm about to do. I haven't rehearsed this. I don't even know if this shit's patched up right. I have no fucking idea. Cool, let's do it. Audiences, I have found that whenever Angel Spit plays live, they react best when something goes wrong or something different outside of the rehearsed reality happens. That's why we don't have a stage show because... And we don't know what we're doing on stage. We just go, get on stage and go for it because there's got to be an, an amount of freedom and punk rock to it. If that moment happens, you can go, you can really run with it. So, um, yeah, man, gun to the head. I love that. I'm taking that with me.